Hey, Church on Fire family, we are so glad to be with you all this weekend. My name is Pastor Josh. I'm the junior high youth pastor here. We still have week, uh, every week we still have services going on for our youth groups. We're on YouTube, we have our services. And then right now we're in a Zoom call with all of our junior high small groups. So everybody go ahead and wave. Take a look at all the students that we have here. We're so excited that we get a chance to greet you this weekend. Hey, welcome to Church on Fire Online. We are so glad that you are here with us today. And if it's your first time watching with us, we want to give you a special shout out today. So go do us a favor, go over to mycfm.info and we will connect with you there. Also, let's go ahead and just start sharing this service. Let's tag people in the comments, send it in Messenger. Let's really all just connect on this service together. But for starters, we're going to go ahead and have some worship. Hey, thanks for tuning in to us this morning. We are so excited to worship with you. Hey, if you look at the screen, this is our entire worship team with us here to worship. Wave your hands, guys. Hey, come on, let's, let's dive in this morning.
bless your name, God. We worship you, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised. Fill our hearts, God, this morning as we lift you up, Jesus.
God, your goodness, Lord. God, I pray that you are blessed, Lord, and exalted in this place. We lift you up, God. We worship you. Have your way in us, God. Have your way in our hearts and our lives, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus.
Hey church, when is the last time that you had an opportunity to feed 40 people at the same time? Well, we have an opportunity here at Church on Fire for you to do that. It's called the 40 for 40 race. So what you can do is give $40 and it will feed 40 people. And it's also a great opportunity for you and your family to have some fun and get out of the house. So here's what we want you to do right now. Go ahead, get your phone out, go to mycfm.info click the tab that says 40 for 40 race and that's where you can find all the info and you can sign up. Also today we are so pumped we're starting a new sermon series called In the Moment. It's all about what's going on in our world right now and so today we get to hear from Chindra Stevens, one of our Dream Team members, to hear about what's going on in his life and his family. So let's go ahead and watch that video. Hey guys, my name is Chindra Stevens and I am a usher at Church on Fire. Um, I've been attending Church on Fire since 2009, and I just want to sit down with you guys tonight to speak to you on how the Lord is helping me um, deal with these challenging times we're, we're going through right now. Um, so about three weeks ago, I was furloughed from my job. I am an area asset protection manager for JCPenney, and we had to get on a conference call on a Wednesday to tell us that that will be our last day of work until the company notified us that we can come back. Um, so needless to say, I freaked out a little bit at first. Um, until I sat back in my chair in my office and really thought about the, the positive things that can come out of this. So, number one, I didn't worry, have to worry about now getting sick or catching the virus as long as I, you know, o obeyed the, the laws and obeyed what we were being told to do and that stay home. And, and two, um, I got to spend more time with my family. Um, and, and that was a positive. So, um, those were two things that I, I took from that and said, well, you know, at least these things um, will help right now. But then I also um, thought about it and, and looked around, and I had a strong support system in my wife um, who said, you know, Chin, the Lord has got us through everything else. Don't worry about it. We'll be fine. And that right there just gave me a, a relief, a, a great sense of relief that, hey, if my wife's not worrying about it, I, I'm not going to worry about it either. He, he has always taken care of us, even when we didn't even ask. Um, so I trust and believe that he's going to take care of us now. Um, since being off work, um, I've linked up with a group of guys from church that we do daily devotions. Um, I find myself having more time to to pray and get in the word and if I ever you know find myself you know feeling down or or you know just getting a little bit stressed of the unknown you know I have a whole nother group of men that I can call and talk to that they are a great support system and a lot of times they just listen and um uh, a lot of them refer me right back to the word, right back to what the Lord says. Um, and that always seems to give me a sense of peace. Um, so if you find yourself um, right now dealing with, you know, being furloughed or, or off of work, um, use this time to, to get closer to God. Use this time to seek him more. Um, use this time to just talk to him. Um, you, you know, get your spouse involved. Me and my wife sit down and we have little conversations that we've never been able to have before. Um, and, and just, you know, we've just gotten closer through this whole ordeal. And I probably would have never had this opportunity had I not been furloughed. So um, instead of me looking at this as being a negative, I'm taking it as, hey, I've gotten to spend more time with my family than I ever have, ever. Um, I've gotten to get more closer with my wife um, and, and, you know, build a stronger bond between us and our relationship. And I've also gotten to get in the Word more than I ever have before. Um, so be encouraged. Um, remember, the Lord loves you. You know, we are His children. He's going to take care of us. He always has. Think about where you're at now and then think about how you got there. 
Exactly. God. Our God. So have faith, have trust, and believe that he will always take care of you. Love you guys. Man, that was awesome to be able to hear from Shindra and what God is doing in his life. And we're going to hear more stories from people in the church about what God is doing in their lives. And let's go over to Pastor Doug right now for the message. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Church Online. Glad you're here with us. Maybe you're on Facebook and you're in a watch party. Maybe you're watching on YouTube. Hey, you can interact with people. Uh, Say hi to your friends. But be sure to listen to this message. I believe the Lord really wants to speak to us. We're starting a new series today called In the Moment. And the title of today's message is Silence, Be Still. Silence, Be Still. So let's pray. I'm going to share a couple things with you. And then we'll get into the Word. So Lord, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for for the technology. Lord, that in this time that we can't meet in this building... We can meet in our homes, and I thank you so much for our church, for the people. And Lord, that we miss so much. We miss getting together, but we know the day's coming when we can. I pray, Lord, that you help us to do what it says in James 1.21, that we receive with meekness your engrafted word. And then, Lord, what it says in Psalm 119.11, David said, I'll hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. He said in verse 105 of Psalm 119, I'll make your word a lamp into my feet, a light into my path. Your word is our spiritual GPS. And then James 1.22, James said that we should be doers of your word and not hearers only. So help us as we receive your word, that we hide it in our heart, we let it guide us through this life, and then we do exactly what it says. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, give somebody in your watch party, in your room, an air high five. And if you're alone, give yourself an air high five. (laughs) Hey, there are a couple things. I got to tell you right now, I'm telling you the honest truth. I have a bottle of uh, of antiseptic or whatever you call it, the stuff you put on your hands to keep them from getting the virus. I don't know about you, but my hands are so dry. My knuckles are bleeding. I don't know if anybody else is like that. I am. There are other things. I, I, there's a word that I probably had never heard before, social distancing. Is anybody tired of hearing that word? Keep doing it, but I'm tired of hearing that word. How about anybody listening right now? You had never heard of a Zoom call uh, before six weeks ago, and so FaceTime calls and doing everything on FaceTime. And right before I came out here to speak, a friend of mine from North Carolina FaceTimed me, and, and we talked, and Thank God for technology, right? Um, there are some crazy things going on. I got, I, I just, we have to have a little humor. So I'm going to put a picture up here. I want you to see this. We're going to put it on this screen, and it's going to go on your TV or on your computer screen. This is hilarious. That's a CD disc that you put in your computer that would load things on it to keep your computer from getting a virus. Um, this person wore it as an antivirus, uh, went out to buy whatever they were going out to buy. So anyway, um, another thing, I, I went to Kroger this week and I went to Remke Biggs and there's still no toilet paper. I want to know who's buying all the toilet paper. Look at somebody that's with you and say, are you buying all the toilet paper? Please stop. Others of us need it. So let me throw a song out to you, give you a song, a really good song. If you're on uh, Pandora or, or iTunes, really good song. I'm going to be giving you a song every week. It's called God of, Revival, God of Revival by Bethel Music. Great song. Listen to it uh, this week when you're reading the Word or when you're driving around. So The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all tell the same story. They're all telling the same story of Jesus Christ, written by different people. So they all put a different slant to it, but they told the same story, and and they list miracles that Jesus did. It's believed that he did listed miracles between 35 and 40, and they all were in different uh, types. One was uh, he would... He would cast evil spirits out of people. Uh, He raised 
three people that we know of from the dead, Jairus' daughter, uh, uh, the man in the uh, funeral procession, and then Lazarus he raised from the dead. He did miracles of nature, which we're going to talk about, and he did physical healings. He healed the lepers, the women, woman with the issue of blood, people that were crippled, people that were blind. He did those kinds of miracles. So it says that there were 35, or at least 35 to 40, but the book of John at the end I want you to look at this. It's going to go on the bottom of your screen. John 21, 25 says, Jesus also did many other things. If they were all written down, I suppose the whole world would not be able to contain the books that had to be written for that. I suppose there wouldn't be enough books to contain all the things that Jesus did. So he did a lot more than what were written in the book. And I want you to understand, he can do a miracle in our life too. I know he's already doing miracles in, in people's lives. It's, if he is, just take a second and tell somebody, and he's doing miracles in my life. So I want us to look in the book of Mark at a miracle that Jesus did, and it's, it's really good, and I want it to apply to our life. So Mark 4, 35, and I've used this recently, but I really want to use it again. Uh, Jesus had been teaching people, and, he, and as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. They jumped in a boat. They started crossing over to the other side of the lake. Jesus gets a pillow, lays down, and in verse 37, they go to him, because uh, a, a fierce storm came up, but soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. High waves started breaking into the boat. I've had that happen to me one time on Lake Erie. I was fishing with my brother and some other people, and we got caught in a storm in a little bitty John boat, and it, it was terrifying. We didn't know if we were going to make it back to shore, and so um, that, that happened Here's something I, I, I've got to share with you. Please grasp this reality. Here's the first point. Nothing surprises God. Nothing. Nothing surprises God. They hopped in the boat. They're going to the other side, and a storm rises up. I don't think God said, oops, I wish I hadn't told them through my son Jesus to get in the boat. I didn't know a storm was going to come up and, and blow on them and the boat get uh, filled with water. God didn't go, oops. God knew. God knew. He knew that a storm was going to blow. And, and, but, but he also knew, please listen, he also knew they were going to make it to the other side. He also knew if Jesus said, get in the boat, let's go to the other side, it doesn't matter how big the storm, how big the waves, how big the wind, how bad the lightning you're going to the other side. And so I, I want to say this, and, and it's hard to explain because I'll, some of you will say, then why? God knew before the foundations of the world that in, 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 the, in the winter of 2020, in the fall of not 2019, and in the winter of 2020 in the spring, he knew a coronavirus would, would happen. He knew it would happen. He knew it. And, 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 you know, then why did God let it happen? I can't answer that. I do know there's a reason. Uh, I do know there's things, and I, I want to give that to you in a minute, that I believe we can learn through it. But uh, I know this one thing. I want, want you to think about the last six weeks and, and what our life has been like. So before that, we were running like crazy, going and going and going and going and doing all these things. And we've talked about it. We've talked about anxiety and stress. The first of the year, I, be, I, I told the guys here and our staff, I was going to preach a sermon series, and I won't tell you what it was about. The end of December, I felt like I should change that. The, and so in January, we talked about discipleship, and then in February, we talked about rest. And so I don't know about you, but in this time, I've spent more time reading. I've spent more time resting. It's been busy. It's been a little busy doing all the things we do. But I, I am resting more. I'm reading more. And so the Lord knew. So let me, let me share the second point. Now, they're in the boat. Think about this. 
Jesus spoke to two storms. I want you to see this. He spoke to two storms. First one was the weather, and this is where we get the title of the message. In Mark 4.39, you know, right before this, the disciples ran to him, Lord, Lord, we're going to drown. Don't you care? Wake up. Wake up. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. So he spoke to nature. That's one of the, the, the miracles that he did to nature. He did it a couple times. He said, stop, storm, stop. And immediately it stopped. But I believe he spoke to the other storm. Please listen now. The storm that was going on inside of the disciples, he spoke to that storm. He said to nature, silence, be still. But I believe he was speaking to the disciples as well. And I'll show you in the next verse. Guys, silence, be still. I've got this. I said we're going to the other side. Relax. Mark 440. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Come on, guys. I, can you just hear him kind of almost like a, not being sarcastic, but guys, come on, relax. I've got this. I knew when we got in the boat, this would happen. But I think it could have happened to show the disciples the power of God that would operate right in the midst of the storm. And I'm telling you, I have never been in a place like I am right now in this country, even in the world. I know you're, you haven't either. And God is saying, relax, I've got this. I've got this. And I'm not saying because I'm a pastor, I don't feel this. I mean, right when this was about to happen, things were getting a little crazy on the news and all that. And my grandson, Chico, called me from school. He's getting ready to get on the bus. He called me. He said, Papa, Papa, they just said, this was on a Thursday, they may cancel school next Monday for two weeks. I said, Chico, I don't know about that. I don't know if that would happen. Hung up. Papa, they're canceling it tomorrow. School's over for two weeks at least. Hung up. Papa, they're canceling the final four. I said, no way, Chico. They can't be doing that and, and I, I wouldn't believe it and so as we're going along in this thing here's one of the signs of, of of the coronavirus a dry cough well I don't know about you but I've been getting up I don't park my truck in the garage and it's covered with pollen covered with yellow pollen it's everywhere on my truck and so uh so it's something I deal with in the spring I'll cough a lot I know there's pollen I know that it's that time of year when it affects me in the morning. I'll cough some. But the first time it happened and I'm coughing, I'm going, oh, no. This is the onset of the coronavirus. A headache's coming or whatever the signs are. And, and so then I had to say, no, this happens to me every year in the spring. Every year I sneeze and I cough because of the pollen. That was a couple weeks ago. I'm doing great. You're doing great. So I want to I give you a couple things that will limit fear or reduce fear. Please listen to me, everybody. Please listen to me. Limit your media input. Limit who you talk to. Stop talking to people who, who are, this is what my daughter calls it, a Debbie Dominer. Stop talking to people who the world's coming to an end. Listen, get what you need to get from the news to stay informed and then turn it off. Reduce your media input, but increase your spiritual input. Increase your spiritual input. We talk about the Word of God. It says in the Bible that we don't live by bread alone, but by the words that come from God. His word brings faith to our life. You're going to get through this. You're going to make it. Look at somebody that you're uh, watching this with or type it to them. You're going to make it. 
You're going to be okay. God's got you. But increase your spiritual input. That's why I gave you a song to listen to. It's a great song that increases your faith. Let me, let me put a, I'm going to put something on the screen right here. Maybe some of you don't know this, how to do this. There's an app called Uversion. It's going to go at the bottom of the screen, or maybe it'll fill the whole screen, and you can see this app. So here's what I want you to do, all right? This is what I want you to do. I want you to download that app if you don't have it. And something I started last fall, I, I, I read through the Bible three times every two years. So I'm back in the book of Exodus, but I'm still reading through the Gospels, still reading through them. There's a gospel that I want you to read over and over and over. Start reading it. If you do a chapter a day, it, it'll take you about a little over a half a month. The book of John. And read it in the New Living Translation. So go to you version, Read the book of John in the New Living Translation. If you can't figure it out, find a teenager or an eight-year-old and they'll show you how. So let me, let me share this one more thing in this part. Let this make you stronger, not weaker. Let what's going on make you stronger. Well, show me that in the Bible. All right, I will. The book of James. The book of James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. And I'm reading this from the message. Now look at this. Consider it sheer joy, friends, when tests and challenge come at you from all sides. Look at this. Consider it sheer joy. A sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come to you from all sides. Listen to me. Here's what's crazy about this thing that's going on in, in our country and in the world. I can't do a thing to fix it. You can't do a thing to fix it. Just social distance, wash your hands, and, and do everything you can to stay healthy. I can't. I can't make calls to anybody. I, I can't. I can't do anything to fix this virus. So I have to say, in this difficult time, I'm counting sheer joy. And I know if you're like me, you're feeling pressure. The world's feeling the pressure. You know that under pressure, your life is forced into open and shows your true colors. Under pressure, our true colors are shown. So under pressure, what starts coming out I need to work on that thing if it comes out in a negative way. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you can become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. Count it all joy. Now, I'm not thankful that the coronavirus is happening. But Lord, while it's happening, I want to learn everything I can learn about me and my wife and our marriage and our life so that I can be better when I come out on the other side. So I'm, I want to give you the last point. I want you to really listen to me. This is the last point. Miracles occur, occur when humanity runs out of options. I'm going to tell you something. As far as this thing goes, I'm out of options, man. I'm just doing what I can do. I can't fix it. Many businesses, you're struggling. You've run out of options. Miracles occur when we run out of options. The disciples in the boat didn't have any options. They couldn't row out of it. They couldn't swim their way out of it. They were out of options. That's when they went to Jesus and he performed a miracle. It's time for us to stop depending on our own self-will and our own self-reliance and say, God, I'm out of options. Perform a miracle. I believe he will perform a miracle in your life. I have a list after list after list of what he's done in my life. And so I've, I've done things with my grandsons and, you know, uh, or my dad did things with me and he's trying to teach me and he's watching me and I'm doing something. And I keep doing it wrong, keep doing it wrong, keep doing it wrong. And, and my dad's like, let me show you. No, dad, I got it. I can figure this out. And I keep messing it up. And he finally is like, uh, okay, I'll watch you fail. Then finally I go, okay, Dad, I'm out of options. And he said, are you ready for my help now? Are you ready? Step back and let me help you. Listen, look at this. 
God begins where you end. God begins where you end. Where I say, God, I can't, I can't do it. I can't make it. Now, I want, I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to me. There's so many business owners. Many of you are laid off. I want to tell you, God has got you. But in this time, I have to say, okay, God, speak to me. Speak to me. Show me. Help me. I want to have faith with you. So decrease your media input. Increase your spiritual input of the Word of God and of, of worship to the Lord. So um, let me say something that, that I, I don't know if I've said it recently, but something that uh, uh, our online pastor, Tyler, said to me. It's incredible uh, the things that are happening. Last year, they said, man, we need to, we need to increase, we need to increase our media online, our services online. I'm like, yes, do whatever you need to do. About a year or so ago, I was sitting on my back porch and the Lord said, Doug, feed the birds, meaning I want you to feed people. So we got a food truck and we started doing farmer's market and feeding kids in the summer. So when this thing happened, excuse me, we didn't have to go back and say, oh, we got to play catch up. No, we were ready for what happened because the Lord spoke to us. Here's, here's what Tyler said to me. He said, we built an ark and now it's raining. We built an ark and now it's raining. So in this time, and when we come through, open your spiritual ears to the Lord so when he speaks to you and to me, we prepare. We're like, this is crazy. This doesn't make sense. Why do you want us to get a food truck? Why do you want us to get more cameras? Why do you want to? And the Lord says, because I know what's coming. He will speak to you. Please listen. In this time, creativity will come to you so that when we're through this, boy, it will take you to another level in your business, in, in your life. So listen to the Lord. So um, let God take control. Let him take control. Let him have control of your life. He said, if you lose your life for me, then you'll gain it back. And so if you don't know him today, you're watching, and thousands have been watching, thousands. No matter where you are, Florida, there's some watching Australia, uh, China, wherever you are, Michigan, West Virginia, wherever you are and you're watching this, if you say, Doug, I don't know Jesus Christ. I said this on Easter Sunday. You can't be good enough. Well, I'll clean up and then God will love me more. No, he says, come to me just like you are. How do I do that? How do I do that? He says, hey, I admit it. I've sinned. I admit it. I need God. B, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. I believe you're the Messiah. I believe you were born of a virgin. I believe evil men crucified you, but I believe you rose again. And I believe you did all that for me to take away my sin. See, I confess. I confess you are the Christ, and I confess you are my Lord. And I confess all of my sins, and I confess that they are gone. Listen, he takes the, the, the record book of your life, and he wipes it clean like you were born again. It's that simple. And then I say, from this day forward, I'm going to serve him. So I want us to all bow our heads, those on YouTube, those on Facebook, those uh, uh, listening. However you're hearing this, let's pray this prayer. Come on. God, I admit it. I've sinned. I'm away from you. I need you. Jesus, I believe you're the Christ, the Son of God. I believe you were born of a virgin. I believe evil men crucified you. I believe they put you in the grave. But I believe you rose again. I believe you did it for me. Jesus, I confess you as my Savior. I confess all of my sins. Right, wipe the record of my sin clean. Just like I was born again. I'm going to serve you. 
from this day forward. I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, boy, tell somebody right now on Facebook or on, Inst- on YouTube. Tell them, I just gave my life to Christ. What a time of rejoicing. And you can go to mycfm.info and you can say, I just gave my life to Jesus Christ. Listen, I want to send this off with a blessing. I want to say thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next week at the same time, 9.15 or 9.30, 11.15 or 7 o'clock. And so I want to say a blessing over your, over your homes, over your marriages, over your children. May your home be reduced of stress. May there be laughter and joy in this time. May you find rest and discipleship in this, in this season. Lord, bless every person that's watching. Bless our young adults. Bless the widow and the widower. Lord, pour out on our business owners, every one of them. They will get through this in Jesus' name. Now look at me. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Lift his countenance upon you. Be gracious unto you and give you peace. Say this with me. Everybody who's watching, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless everybody. If you decided to make a life decision today or gave your life to Christ, we would love to celebrate that with you. Go ahead and go on to mycfm.info, click the new here button and fill out all the information on there so we can connect with you and celebrate that with you. And have a great week, church. We will see you right here on Wednesday night.